Delicious, comforting, and affordable, it's no surprise that pizza is considered one of the most popular foods in the world. 20,000 subscribers. Guys, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys have been giving me since the start of this channel. All the people that have given me guidance and tips and advice. Thank you so much for making this happen and making this possible. All I can say is thank you so much. And in celebration, I'm going to make one of my favorite foods, pizza. We're going to make a grandma pizza today. And guys, I'm really excited about this one. And again, thank you so much. Let's get started. As usual, all the ingredients and recipes will be linked in the description box down below. This delicious dough recipe does take 24 hours to slowly ferment in the refrigerator. And I do have a full video about this dough, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it. Now, I really like making my pizza dough using double zero flour, but if you can't find it, bread flour is a great substitute. And if you guys are fans of this channel, you guys know that I love making my doughs and breads in a food processor. It's really quick and very easy, but it is not necessary. So as you can see, I weighed the total amount of dough and it gave us uh, enough for three doughs at 228 grams, which I'm gonna portion into little dough balls. Once we're done portioning it, I'm gonna just lightly flour this container and put it in my refrigerator for 24 hours. And while the dough is resting in the refrigerator, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe. Now, here's the next day. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna slice up some pepperoni and I'm gonna make my sauce. I also have a full video on this sauce. I will also put a link as well as the recipe down below. And with the food mail, I'm just gonna run it through to separate all the pulp and the seeds, separate it all. And if you're using a food mill, you know at the bottom of the food mill, there's a lot of sauce stuck underneath it. So give that a nice scrape. So in my sauce, I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper and olive oil. Now I do like to bring this up to a simmer for about 20 minutes. I feel that that really helps cut through the acidity of your tomato sauce and you don't have to add sugar. And then for a little kick, I like to add just a pinch of chili flakes at the end and just let the sauce sit. And as far as the cheese goes, I love using a full fat, low moisture mozzarella cheese. I know someone's gonna say, yo, you know, grandma pies, you're supposed to use sliced cheese to lay across the bottom, but you know what? I'm gonna do it this way because, hey, it's my pizza. And with your pizza, you can make this any way you want. All right, so 24 hours later, here's our dough, nice and fermented, very flavorful. And this dough is really easy to work with, and all you gotta do is just stretch this out. I'm gonna lay this on a little sheet tray. If you wanna make a bigger pie, use more dough, but since I'm making this for myself, this is all I really need. Now add a little olive oil to your pan, give it a nice little brush, and just stretch your dough until it hits all the corners, all the sides. And all you gotta do is just pinch up the sides as I'm doing right now and make sure it folds up a little bit. This pizza will shrink a little, so just be careful of that. And then just add your cheese and whatever toppings you want. I'm gonna do the mozzarella, tomato sauce. With this kind of pie, or pretty much any kind of pizza, unless it's a thick, like pan pizza or thick crust pizza, I don't like adding too much sauce. It's gonna make it all floppy and drippy and droopy. But you know, if it's you, if that's what you really want, then go ahead, go for it. Um, and then here, as you can see, I'm shaving some pecorino and a grandma pie. From what I know and from what I understand, does have a little sprinkling of dry oregano. And because my oven is a gas oven and the heating elements are on the bottom, I like to put the tray on the floor for about seven minutes till the bottom gets nice and crispy and then under the broiler for about four minutes. But every oven is different. So always check the bottom of your pizza dough. See me, I love the little leopard spotting, whichever you want. You want more leopard spotting, you want less leopard spotting. You have to be the one that checks the progress of your pizza. All right, and then here I am putting fresh basil on top afterwards. This is one sexy pie. All right, let's get ready to cut this thing and serve. And you can hear just how crispy this crust is. All right, once we're done cutting this, let's go and dig in. Now, after waiting 24 hours for our dough to proof, it's time to finally eat our pizza.
nice crust, chewy, crispy. The sauce has got a great amount of tang to it. Mmm. Pizza party, guys. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and crush the rest of this pizza and go ahead, give this recipe a try. It's super delicious and it's really easy to make. Again, thank you so much for the 20,000. I love and appreciate all you guys so much. If you guys like this content, smash that like button and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it and I would love to see you guys again. All right, guys, stay safe out there and as always, peace.